Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. In January 2025, something happened in the Chinese AI circle that caught Americans off guard. DeepSeek, a little-known Chinese company, used a castrated H20 chip specially supplied by NVIDIA to train a large AI model that shocked the world. The training cost of this model is only 1 20th of GPT-4, but its performance is directly comparable to ChatGPT 4.5, which scared the US Department of Commerce to hold a meeting overnight. Five days later, the United States announced an upgraded ban, and even the H20 chip, which has only one-third of the performance of H100, was banned from sale. NVIDIA CEO Huang Renxuan reluctantly announced the supply cut on April 16, but flew to Beijing the next day to try to win back the Chinese market, after all, Chinese customers contribute $17 billion in revenue to him every year. The United States is more ruthless this time than before. Not only did they quietly change the ban on Huawei's Ascend chips from global ban to risk warning, they also found new buyers in advance. Saudi Arabia bought 18,000 high-end chips in one go, and the UAE signed a large order of 500,000 chips per year. These rich countries in the desert have become the new financiers of American chip companies. But Chinese technology companies are not so lucky. In the purchase lists of Alibaba and Tencent, all undelivered orders worth 5.5 billion US dollars have been frozen. Nvidia has actually been guerrilla warfare with Chinese policies over the years. When they launched the most powerful H100 chip on the surface in 2022, the United States did not allow it to be sold to China, so they made an A800 with a 30% reduction in performance. As a result, Chinese companies went crazy to buy, directly extending NVIDIA's delivery cycle from 7 days to 28 days. The Americans saw something was wrong, and changed the rules again in 2023. All chips with a transmission speed of more than 600 gigabytes per second between chips are banned from sale. NVIDIA turned around and launched the H20 with a transmission speed of only 550 gigabytes per second, and the performance was only 20% of the H100. I didn't expect that Chinese companies could even play with this reduced version of chips, which led to the famous scene at the beginning where DeepSeek used low-end to beat high-end. Huawei's Ascend chip has now become the only life-saving straw. At the Computing Power Center in Lingang, Shanghai, engineers are testing the Ascend 910B chip, which has an FP16 computing power of 320 flops, 15% higher than NVIDIA H20. More importantly, the price with the same computing power, the cost of the Ascend chip is only half of that of NVIDIA. ByteDance technical director revealed that they used a cluster of 384 Ascend 910BS to train large models 12% faster than NVIDIA A100. However, the problem is also obvious. Huawei's MindSpore framework is not as easy to use as CUDA, and programmers have to learn a new system. There are little tricks behind the repeated jumps in US policies. On May 13, the US Department of Commerce's official website suddenly revised the wording of the ban on Huawei's Ascend chips, changing global ban to risks exist. This kind of word game is actually intended to leave a way out, if Ascend is really banned completely, Chinese companies will be determined to use domestic chips. The Biden administration still has a Trump card in its hand. China controls 90% of the world's rare earth refining capacity, and these materials are essential for chip manufacturing. On May 16, the White House released a rumor that it was willing to restart negotiations on chips and rare earths, but the two sides are still deadlocked. Chinese technology companies have begun to hard land. Tencent transferred 60% of its 2025 AI budget to Huawei Ascend, and Alibaba Cloud urgently purchased 20,000 Ascend 910 Bolivianos. Domestic chip companies such as Cambrian and Mushi suddenly became popular, and Cambrian's stock price soared 47% in a week. 
However, the cost of transformation is not small. The technical director of a short video platform has calculated that migrating the NVIDIA platform to Ascend requires rewriting at least 30% of the code. What is more troublesome is the talent gap. There are less than 2,000 programmers in the country who know both CUDA and MindSpore. NVIDIA itself is also paying a heavy price. After the supply cutoff order came into effect, its stock price plummeted 9% that day. Huang Renshuan admitted at an internal meeting that the most important growth market has been lost. In order to make up for the losses, NVIDIA's new chip factory in Mexico started production three months ahead of schedule, specifically producing special edition chips for Southeast Asian customers. But these actions are only temporary solutions. Morgan Stanley's report shows that NVIDIA's data center revenue in the second quarter of 2025 is expected to decrease by 1.1 billion US dollars. Huawei's supply chain is running wildly. At the Ascend chip factory in Shenzhen, the production line runs 24 hours a day, and the monthly production capacity has soared from 100,000 pieces to 250,000 pieces. Huawei's rotating chairman, Xu Jijun personally supervised the battle and demanded that 100% domestic substitution be achieved by the end of the year, currently 15% of the components of Ascend 910B still rely on imports. The most difficult part is the lithography machine. Although Shanghai Microelectronics 28 nanometers lithography machine has been mass-produced, the yield rate of producing 7 nanometers chips is only 40%. Engineers from SMIC revealed that they are using double exposure technology to bite the 7 nanometers process, but the cost is three times higher than TSMC. The secret war in the international market is equally fierce. On May 20, the United States suddenly allowed South Korea's Samsung to sell memory chips to China, but continued to block logic chips. This slap-and-give-a-date strategy is intended to divide the united front of Chinese technology companies. Japan's Tokyo Electron took the opportunity to increase prices by 30% and sold etching machines to Chinese chip companies, making a lot of money. The European Union watched from the sidelines, and ASML quietly shipped three 28 nanometers lithography machines to China, fearing that it would completely lose this largest customer. In this chip war, small and medium-sized enterprises are the ones who suffer the most. The original purchase of 200H20 chips by a self-driving startup in Hangzhou was temporarily cancelled, and the company's CTO flew to Shenzhen overnight to purchase Ascend 910B. Now Huawei's orders are scheduled for three months later, and even if the price is increased by 20%, it is still impossible to get spot goods. He complained in his circle of friends. Some companies tried desperate measures and began to hoard second-hand graphics cards, causing the price of RTX 4090 gaming graphics cards to be hyped up to 20,000 yuan per card. Even the owner of the computer mall in Zongwenkan sighed, I have never seen a graphics card that is more valuable than gold in my life.